Hi, this is your host of Nibhatiya, and today we have with us James Reinders, engineer and one API chief evangelist at Intel. James, it's great to have you on the show. My pleasure. And today we are going to talk about uh, Cyclomatic, the open source announcement. Before we talk about the open source aspect of it, could you tell us about Cyclomatic? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, there's the this rise of heterogeneous computing. And so there's this question of uh, programming for heterogeneity. And Sickle is a technique to, to extend C++ for that, you know, in a fashion that's very open. Um, and so there's a lot of interest in migrating uh, existing CUDA code, you know, that's written uh, in, in NVIDIA's CUDA to Sickle. So Sickle-O-Matic is a project that will take and analyze a CUDA program and do uh, a great deal of the work uh, for the developer at doing the conversion and end up with a program in Sickle that uh, the programmer can uh, refine and tune and then be uh, taking advantage of Sickle. Excellent. Uh, what was the need to create this project? Isn't there already some solutions that try to solve it? I don't think there's a solution that does what Cyclomatic does. I, I know there isn't. It's, you know, the general question of actually migrating your code and helping you move to modern C++ with Sickle is uh, a unique aspect of Cyclomatic. There have certainly been um, efforts to take and uh, try to run CUDA code on other machines like uh, the HIP project from AMD uh, that certainly take CUDA code and run it on other um, machines, but Cyclomatic is unique in helping with a true migration to modern C++ with Sickle. Can you talk about what kind of pain points for developers are you trying to address with this project? Well, CUDA uh, arose from the popularity of NVIDIA GPUs, and especially in uh, HPC and, and AI. And so there's been a lot of development, but that um, as the market matures, and there become a lot more hardware options for accelerators, uh, there's a pain point because CUDA is strongly defined uh, specifically for GPUs and for NVIDIA GPUs. So Sickle takes a broader view of, um, of accelerators. Uh, they can be GPUs from any vendor. They can be FPGAs. They can be AI chips. And so really to, to take full advantage of this uh, explosion of new hardware options, uh, Sickle is a better choice. So developers that are looking for their programs to take full advantage of C++ and be more vendor agnostic, uh, see Sickle as, as a, a solution for them. So certainly if you're not feeling pain, if all you want to do is use NVIDIA GPUs, Sickle-O-Matic's not for you, but um, it does help developers uh, uh, who are looking to you know broaden the uh, exposure of their program to more hardware. Let's talk about what are the use cases where Cyclomatic or CUDA can help engineers and scientists? Well, absolutely. But you, you, to take a look at where uh, CUDA and Sickle are used, it's at a certain level of the stack, right? So if you're, if you're gaming, uh, there's some level of that stack, maybe the physics engine or so forth, that has some code written in CUDA or can be written in Sickle. Uh, if you're on, on a cloud, doing uh, data scientist work, you're using TensorFlow uh, or you're using PyTorch, there's a layer in there that will have uh, CUDA code or Sickle code. And that's, that's where this is aimed. So there's a vast uh, amount of code around the world. And of course, uh, scientists doing uh, a, a protein folding, you know, looking for new cures to viruses. There's, or doing oil exploration. There's lots of applications out there that do many different uh, uh, scientific, um, or solve scientific and engineering problems, somewhere in their stack, they may have some CUDA code uh, that can be migrated to Sickle to give it, uh, you know, the opportunity to take advantage of more hardware. That's that's where this is focused. Uh, let's talk about the open source aspect. First of all, uh, Intel is not new to open source. You folks have been doing open source for a very long time. So sometimes asking this question also, I feel like, 
why I'm asking this to, to, but you know, I think it's very important to repeat the message again and again, because there are always new folks. So first of all, talk about the importance of open source of Intel, and then we'll talk about why you decided to open source it. Yeah, open source has many dimensions to why it's wonderful, but the, uh, I think the greatest one is the, the opportunity for the community to come together and contribute and not be locked out. If, if someone feels strongly about adding a certain type of support or functionality, the option is there to everyone to participate. Uh, and we've benefited enormously from that. The projects that we've created over the years uh, that have uh, gone on to be very successful do that because of, of community involvement, uh, both the ability to look at the code and give us some feedback on it, uh, and the opportunity to go in and propose uh, changes and make uh, additions on their own. What are the immediate or long-term goals of this project? And what kind of community do you think is being built or growing around the project? You know, Cyclomatic, the process of taking someone's source code and converting it, uh, it depends a lot on the style of writing the code, the particular functionality they used and so forth. And we've had a number of uh, uh, experiences with people with CUDA code uh, that they're migrating it that say, hey, we wrote it this certain way. And there's kind of a simple little change if we made it to the Cyclomatic tool uh, you know, it would help us with that conversion. And so it's a great example of community being able to understand their code, understand that the tool is doing most of what they wanted, but there's one more thing that if they added, it would make their life easier. And uh, the opportunity to just go do that themselves, we've had a number of uh, uh, different community members say, hey, you know, we could just do this. Um, and so uh, we're really excited about opening that up. Now, there are people with bigger ideas too that, that generalize this, that say, hey, we could, we could add on to this uh, structure. So we really look forward to you know, the innovation that may come with that. There have been people who have said, hey, I think we could take CUDA code and we could do something useful to sketch out a Python program. And I don't know, frankly, if that's, you know, that'll bear fruit, but the, once you get things in open source, the community can look at the general uh, problem of taking code that was written in a very proprietary fashion and then leveraging it for the whole community, you know, and having this automatic conversion tools opening up a lot of conversations. I, I look forward to seeing what comes of it. What kind of user base is already there in most open source uh, projects, especially when they come from a company like Intel, there's already a substantial user base around those projects. So talk about what kind of user base is already there and what kind of adoption are you expecting? Absolutely. You know, it's uh, there's been such huge interest in Sickle in recent times. In fact, I think uh, some of our group was at the ISC, the International Supercomputing in Germany, and they had a BOF and uh, they had a room that only it was supposed to hold like 180 people and it got filled with over 200 people. Um, there's this excitement around Sickle. So there is a, a big community of CUDA developers, especially in high performance computing and AI that have developed a lot of CUDA code. Um, and so they form a, a very active community that, that is uh, already using Cyclomatic uh, or is, uh, is interested in using it, interested in what it, possibilities it has. So you're right, we, we already have a community that's interested, that's engaged. Um, we have developers working on it, uh, maintainers. I think that's very important, you know, because sometimes you say things open sourced and you wonder, well, who's going to carry it forward? You, you need people working on it. So the fact that we have users and a community already makes it a very strong project going forward uh, with a lot of interest. So I. I see this exploding uh, uh, in the future in terms of growing in volume, growing in interest, because um, uh, it's pretty early on still with Sickle, um, but we see tremendous interest in it because it really does open up the possibilities for code to be uh, more vendor agnostic to, to uh, avoid you know the vendor lock-in that you would associate with a proprietary language like CUDA. James, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this project. Also share you know that uh, what kind of community is already there, what kind of excitement is there. And once again, thanks for you know creating one more open source project. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Uh, it was my pleasure. Thanks.